Hello and welcome to another kind of custom redo. So some of you may have seen this Invincible Custom I did I think a couple months back now and the paintwork wasn't particularly great. I kind of started to lose my effort as I went along with it. Just things weren't going right. And you can see just how poor the paint ended up being, specifically those yellow areas. And it did just get worse with time. It got so much darker as time went on. Uh, and the areas that stayed yellow stayed yellow. The areas that went dark went very dark. And it shouldn't look very good. So I decided to give them a little bit of a kind of revamp. And in order to do that, I sanded him all back down, acetoned the entire thing, except for the head. I didn't mess with the head because the head was fine. And remasked it, reprimed it with matte coat, and then went and did a completely new set of airbrush colours to get a more vibrant colour scheme to him. Flash forward to now, this is his current colour scheme. You can see he looks a lot nicer. There's a lot more vibrancy to him. I fixed the gloves. The gloves don't go up to his elbow anymore. They actually go up to his forearm. Just scratching a little bit of what I thought was a paint scratch, but just some random little thing stuck to his shoulder. I also went and redid his toes. So he's actually got the articulated toes that I make. So these are the 3D printed feet that I used to make a while back. And yeah, I kind of put a little bit more effort into him. Um, I made him a couple weeks ago actually, and this is just me finally getting around to making a video. But you might be noticing the head is slightly different. So this is the original head on the right. Obviously the left has a little bit of a smirk going on. And I'm gonna show you how I went and made what I think is about seven different heads. So this is the chalk paint that I used. I'm gonna be 3D scanning the original head, so I'm gonna chalk paint it. Unfortunately, I forgot to record any of the process for this, so I'll be using splices of footage from old stuff. Uh, which happens to be the Spider-Man video that I did a little while ago. And this is the scanner we're going to be using. This is the RevoPoint Mini 2, and this thing is incredible. It has the ability to capture a small object's intricate detail, with precision of up to 0.02mm, and a single frame accuracy of 005 It also has a 16 FPS capture speed, allowing 3D models to be created really quickly, with up to 8 million points captured per second. A big improvement over the Mini 1, this has a higher megapixel RGB camera and a larger aperture, allowing for much better colour scans. In addition, it has flash LEDs to improve marker tracking, which really help with features objects and the calibration of the scanner itself. As the name suggests, Mini. This thing is tiny, lightweight, and it, it's just very, very helpful. Um, so thank you very much to Point for sending this. You can see here just a little overview. I won't bore you with everything that's in it. I'm sure you guys are more interested in how I use it. Here are those trackers that I was mentioning earlier. Now, like I said, this is old footage. However, the way I scan is the exact same way for the new Invincible heads and these Spider-Man parts. So it is a bit of a janky setup, but it works uh, and it works fairly well. So here's how I do it. Now, one thing that's very helpful, you'll see in a minute that I am a little bit shaky while moving this and I'm maybe moving too fast in parts. The Mini 2 actually will automatically remove faulty frames from moving too fast and from being shaky. And it will use its IMU for positional data for frame stitching, which means you don't have to do a lot of post-processing. Speaking of which, this is the software. You can go into one click, apply, and it will also give you an estimated time, but it will do most of the work for you. And if you don't like it, you can go back and do it yourself. Uh, I did go and rescan with some additional markers, just using blue tag there, which you can see helped the quality of the scan massively. And now I'm using just some of the tools that are available in the software to cover holes, tweak bits that I don't want there. Um, I have already done the one click on this scan itself. And this is me covering the holes. So you can detect the holes, you can go and click them, select them. And you can see I'm just making sure I get all of them. I'm ignoring the blue tack mounds that I've put around to help with the tracking because I'm going to be removing them in a minute anyway. And there you go, that's all the holes covered. And this is now one meshed object. So now I want to get rid of those little blue tack triangles. So I'm going to isolate them. And I do need to turn the value up here, uh, just so it detects a bigger object. 
and you'll see it will highlight those as red. And then I can go to here, apply it, and it will remove those. And now I'm left with the actual scanned part that I need, which as you can see has come out extremely well. Obviously this is slightly edited because I've redone the mouth at this point, but there really wasn't much touch up need for this file. Uh, the scan came out absolutely beautifully. I've obviously gone and put the neck joint in the bottom, so I've hollowed the head out. But the actual surface detail, I've not changed this at all, I don't think. Apart from obviously moving the mouth around and the expressions, this surface, the hair I definitely haven't touched. And there were basically no surface imperfections at all. So I'll run you through all the expressions I've done. Obviously I've got quite a few of them here. So I went and did the open mouth, then I've got a damaged one with the lens burst and the kind of gash coming up the side of his face. And then I kind of just went and did a few of them to see what I liked and then ended up painting all of them. The gritted teeth I'm not the biggest fan of, but obviously I ended up doing them anyway. And now I just have a lot of different emotions and things to go. I think the grin is probably one of my least favourite because it just looks a little bit creepy. But here he is, uh, once again, very happy with how this looks now. So I'll run you through all of the painted heads that I've done. Uh, and they do pop on just like a normal Marvel Legends head would. There's a nice socket in there and it is just the pop that you get when you take them on and off. So this is the weakest of the seven, I think. Uh, not a big fan of the weird toothy grin. Um, I'm not a big fan of this one either. The gritted teeth with not much emotion is a bit weird. Um, I think this is one of my favorites. But these are my favorite ones. The damaged ones with the blood and the kind of uh, cartoon scratch effect on his face. I think these came out the best, personally. This one is my favorite. The neck looks a bit weird there. Um, but obviously you've got that range going on because it's, again, it's the ball joint that I use for all my Marvel Legends style heads. But yeah, the paint came out surprisingly nicely on this one. I did smash the lens by dropping it, uh, but it ended up looking like his eyebrow, so it's fine. Now here are the hands that I've done. I did take the hands that I neglected in the original video and painted those. I've also added these kind of just flat hands, these gesturing kind of action hands, and then this relaxed hand. Uh, it's basically just a mishmash of what I thought would look quite nice for Invincible with his character. There's also this one, which was a Doctor Strange magic effect that I turned into a flicking hand, which I thought could be quite imposing for, you know, a super powered character. And then obviously Mark is a, a young superhero, so I've given him his mobile phone. And you can see the hands don't all line up size-wise. Uh, the phone holding hand being the smallest of the lot, and the splayed open hand being the biggest. But when they're in action poses, you don't tend to notice it too much. So here he is just giving a loop around, and I think the way these heads came out, and the fact that this is an option, because I hand sculpted the original head, if you don't want to see that video, obviously you can go back and watch that as well. That was hand sculpted, so I didn't have a 3D file to make alternate faces for. So being able to scan that and make as many alternate heads as I have, is just, again, I refer to this 3D scanner as a game changer all the time, but it really is. If you want one of these scanners for yourself, there is a link in the description below, as well as a couple other links and some helpful information about the scanner itself and a Facebook group to do with the scanner itself. So again, fantastic scanner. Thank you so much to Point for sending it my way. I have had so much fun messing about with the scanner, what it's capable of, and just overall the potential that it gives for action figure customizers and just small minute work in general. It picks up so much nice detail. Yeah, I, I could sit and talk about the scanner for ages. It's incredible. Very powerful little machine and I'm so glad to have it. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you guys like the custom. I know a lot of you like the custom originally, but obviously I've kind of given it a massive revamp. So let me know what you think of it now. Um, hopefully more Invincible style customs to come. I have a couple body molds lying around that would work quite nicely for certain characters. I also have plans for certain characters. So there is some stuff in the works. I am also still working on Ben 10. Rip Jaws is still sat on my desk in his basic form. Uh, I just need to do some work on it. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Please enjoy these photos of the invincible poses that I got.